Hi there, folks. This is the HTML Formatter version 3, a uh, quick intro that I'm putting together to show folks how easy it is to use the HTML Formatter. If you are watching this video, you might want to maximize it by clicking that button right there. Uh, but let me show you how easy it is to use. So I've got a piece of kind of messy code here. It's a uh, cold fusion, but it could be HTML. Uh, and so you see we've got a CF loop uh, next to a CF if. Uh, we've got tables that just don't look quite right. Um, and so this is how you can actually use it. So again, I'm using Eclipse. And you could use this with uh, Home Site, Dreamweaver, uh, whatever you feel like using. But I can actually just drag straight from Eclipse or see if Eclipse down to the uh, HTML formatter icon and drop it there. You don't have to take as long as I did. I was just doing that to show. And um, this little report comes up. And you don't uh, have to have this report. I like to see what's going on, but you can turn it off if you want to in the config file. And we can see that the uh, code was automatically updated and cleaned up. And so where's my loop? Here it is. It looks quite nice now. Uh, my table all indented properly. Um, you have the uh, ability to uh, basically also have, uh, and you can control this for conf config file, but uh, like a TD that starts on the same line and ends on the same line will actually uh, can be, it can stay that way or it can indent uh, depending on what you choose. So you see we've got a CF if uh, that starts and ends on the same line with an else as well. Um, but uh, you could actually force that to format uh, or indent if you wanted to, all configurable. Uh, but we can see you can do this from, let's see here, home site. So I'll just go ahead and drag and drop that. So these files are all the same files. Uh, I just renamed them so that I could use them in different IDEs. Very easy, you see. Very nice. And textpad. Uh, so you can actually do a send to if you wanted to. So send to HTML formatter. Cleans it up, and we'll go over to TextPad, and boom, it updates just like that. Um, if you wanted to, let me just minimize some of these windows. You could, let's see here, actually just drag and drop as well to uh, an icon that you put on your desktop, however you want to use it. Um, so I close this, go over to TextPad, and it'll tell me it updated again. Didn't do anything because it already cleaned it up. And so um, some of the features. Uh, so it will properly indent and add new lines to code to make it more readable and understandable. Uh, operates on the original files if you want, uh, so that Eclipse, CF Eclipse, Home Site, Dreamweaver uh, are automatically updated. And the first thing it would do, though, is make a backup and then check the backup before it proceeded. And if for some reason it failed, it would not go on and operate on the originals. Or you can tell it to never operate on the originals, make copies, and then use those copies to make the uh, changes. Uh, you can control what tags to format and what tags to leave alone. Uh, so if you want CF mail, CF query, script, and style tags to be left alone, that's up to you. Also, uh, it can actually work on files and directories, or you can, I guess, control the file types that it works on in those directories. Uh, and will tell you what tags are closed out of order. So something like a B and then an LI. The next thing that should be closed is an LI, um, but it's not, so this would alert you. And it can leave tags uh, to, that are open and closed on the same line alone, or it can go ahead and indent them like this, or it could just present it as one single line. Um, so that's it for the uh, for the short term. Uh, if you want to watch the uh, next part of this video, I'll show you how to configure it. But I'm re planning on releasing this version, version 3, sometime in mid to late October of 2009 based on a bunch of feature requests that I got from other users. And um, it may not be the prettiest sort of program uh, in terms of the way it, uh, the little DOS box comes up, but the code that it generates uh, is quite lovely. Oh, and one last thing to show you is that it actually works on directories. So here's a directory, and I'll open up Eclipse. We can see that um, you know it's the same code, and I can just put something in to show you that this is actually operating on these files. Hi there, hi there, users. And uh, just drag and drop the whole directory. Boom. And uh, you can see that it worked on a whole bunch of different files. I close this report, and it updates. So there you go. 
Um, so coming up next is how to actually install and configure. So watch that if you'd like. Thank you. All right, folks, so this is the second part of the video, uh, the actual installing and configuring of the HTML formatter. So you should have probably a zip file that you've downloaded from uh, my website. And what you want to do is just go somewhere, and let's just say for argument's sake that you go to the C drive and create a directory called HTML formatter, or, but you can put it wherever you want and you open up the zip file eventually there you go and drag and drop the files in there so the first time you run it you are going to need to enter a serial number and so it asks for your serial number I'm gonna move this over so you can't see what my serial number is and I will just paste that in and so I'm ready to go. So um, to set this up, you may have seen me use the quick launch bar down here. All you need to do is uh, let's see here, right click and drag and drop to down here and create shortcut here. Boom. So now you've got that um, uh, in the quick launch bar, always accessible. You can also right click it, uh, right click and drag to the desktop and create shortcuts here. And lastly, if you wanted to use the uh, Send To feature that I was showing, you can go to your C drive and go to Documents and Settings, find your user account, and go to the Send To directory. And again, just right click, drag and drop. Oh, I already have one in there, but I'll do it again. Uh, create shortcuts here. And now I've got two. I'll actually get rid of that one. But that's how you do it. So, let me show you now what you want to do to uh, configure the uh, INI file. So here it is, and uh, the first thing to tell you is is that anything that starts with a comment, obviously, or a pound sign, is commented out, not going to be read at all. So these are all comments. So the way things work is is that you have a value and then it's separated by a tab so literally like if you just hit the tab button and then um, uh, so this I'm sorry this is a variable and then a tab and then the values and it's either going to be multiple values and if it's multiple values it's separated by a pipe or if it's a single value it's just the uh, variable tab and then the uh, value so uh, I guess the first thing probably to show you is the way it comes out of the gate uh, and that is with this operate on originals set to false and um, this means that basically it is going to take the files that uh, you have the HTML formatter operate on it's going to copy them and then use those copies to do all the indenting and formatting that it needs to do so uh, and it will what it'll do is it'll create a file with the regular file name and then underscore indented so that you uh, never have the original modified now if you want to change that so that it can operate uh, with Eclipse uh, home site without having to open new files you'd set that to true but I set it this way so that you know what's happening. Uh, you never have your files get modified without you knowing what's going on. And you basically are agreeing to the fact that the HTML formatter is going to do this for you and you want it to um, and that you won't sue me or anything. So anyway, thing, uh, so anyway uh, but if you do set it to true, I mean, I've done my best uh, effort to make sure that everything's going to be fine. Uh, I've never run into any problems uh, and I can't imagine any way for it to happen because what happens is that it will uh, very first thing it'll do it'll make a backup of the file and then check that backup uh, before it does anything so you always should be assured that everything will be fine but let's show you how it operates with the file with this config file not changed at all so I will open up uh, let's see here I will open up this cart messy file and it is kind of messy and you may recognize this file as the file I was working with before um, so I will go ahead and just drag and drop this onto the HTML formatter 
and it won't update because it created a new file and if I uh, F5 this or actually I guess refresh refresh we see that cart messy underscore indented was created so this is now the cleaned up version of that uh, file so uh, and to show you what would happen if I was to change this to true I will now operate on this original file so I'll open this up first can see that it's messy. Where's my loop? And drag it down, drop it, uh, and we can configure this to turn off or only show up for 10 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever you want. You'll see that this has been updated. So um, there you go. And it looks nice and pretty. I'm going to set it back to uh, false because. Um, I'm going to be doing lots of examples and I don't want to constantly have my original updated for that purpose. So what we'll do is we'll turn that there. And so I've closed that. Um, so the other thing uh, to show you is the tags that it will indent. So you actually control what tags it's going to indent. Um, so you can get rid of tags that you don't want to have indented. Uh, add tags that you do want to be indented. And then the other thing to be aware of is uh, the tags to leave alone. So CF query, CF mail, style, script. The CF query and CF mail were tags that users suggested to me. And the reason being is, is that those are normally tags that you wouldn't want folks to uh, mess with. So um, you can see that I've done some indenting here uh, of the CF query tag. What I'll do is I'll indent it some more to say something that I really like. And there we go. And we'll actually do the order by way over here if we wanted to. So you can see. Um, so CF messy. There we go. Cart messy. Go over here, I'll update, and it's all been indented the way that I wanted it to uh, be indented, or it was left alone, I should say. Um, so that's tags to leave alone. Uh, the extensions. So if this, if the extension that you want to have it operate on isn't listed here, go ahead and uh, put it in. Otherwise, it will not do anything. Uh, you can have it logged to a file. So there's a log file in whatever the directory of the HTML format or exe is. It'll basically append to a log file telling you what's going on with the reporting. Uh, strip blank lines. So I've got it set to true right now. So if we go over and take a look at the difference between the two, so you can see new lines here. And then we go over here, there's no new lines. If I set it to false, uh, and then I drag and drop this again. We'll see the new lines that I had for are back in, but it's still indented the way that we want it to be indented. Uh, set that back. Um, so the black window, the DOS window that we see coming up, I've got it set to five minutes. You can set it to zero if you wanted to. And now, when it goes and does its thing, I'll just show up real quickly, disappear. Boom, done. Updates again. And that's just Eclipse being silly. If I do that, boom, the formatting or color syntax is back. Um, set that back to 300. Uh, you can actually choose what re replacement character you want. So uh, you can have a tab. If you wanted four spaces, you could do four spaces. You can do whatever you want there. Um, so break tags that open and close on the same line. This is a ugly, ugly variable name, but hopefully kind of descriptive. So let me show you what I mean. So we have a TD. This line right here is a TD that opens and closes on the same line. And uh, the way the behavior is right now is that it opens and closes on the same line. 
if I were to set that variable to true. It will break everything up so that it looks like this. So you can see it changed that TD so that everything is on its own uh, own new line, basically. Um, so the the thing that it didn't mess with was the CF if uh, and else right here, and that actually is controlled right here. So leave inline CF alone. If I set that to false and reran it, so there's our CF if else and if on new lines. I'm going to set that stuff back the way it was set to the defaults. And you can see what the default settings are always. Um, and then I guess the last thing, well, I guess there's two things to show you. Um, so there is a backup directory that's created automatically when you operate on the originals. And um, you can change that path. But uh, let's go to... Here we go. HTML formatter, uh, or formatter backups. And so it'll be year, month, day, and then timestamp. So that only, this directory is only created if you want to operate on the originals. If you leave it so that it doesn't operate on the originals, um, a directory or a uh, file will be created with the indented uh, nomenclature. So I can actually show you, well, there's indented. Um, I don't have a directory, but it would actually create a directory called indented with all the indented code inside of there as well. And then, um, so here is a, uh, I added this in at the last second. And this is basically if you get a file like something like Google and Google pretty much uh, is almost on one line. Uh, this has got, I guess, a few new lines in it. But let's take a look to see what happens uh, if we need new lines to be added in for everything. So throw Google in. And this is just basically saying that, um, amazingly enough, Google does not have uh, the right number of spans opening and closing, uh, and it's closing them things uh, out of order. But if we take a look, Google indented showed up, and it did the indenting for us. So it went from this mess with super, super, super long lines to this where we could actually see what was going on. And uh, another example would be, let's say here, I'll set that back to false. I'll show you that it can operate like on a very big file where you wouldn't be able to tell what was going on at all. This is the index page to FARC. Um, so you can see there's absolutely no indenting going on here at all. Drag and drop this on to the HTML formatter. And so they're fairly good. They've got one span that uh, isn't, is it, well, I guess isn't opened, uh, but they have uh, more closes than they have opens. But we go back over here, hit F5 and Eclipse, and open it up. And we go from something that looks like, we'll go to the top here, like this, to something that looks like this. So couldn't see anything see what was going on with the table structure there at all but you've got a div and you've got your table properly indented now so I guess that is it um, thanks for tuning in and I hope that this was helpful